Friday night, I want a chippy tea. Chippy tea, chippy tea, I want a chippy tea. Oh, you keep giving me posh, no, she don't agree with me. I don't want lobster thermidor with a raspberry coulee. It's Friday night, I'm within me rights, I want a chippy tea. So we've just got finished recording episode 13, I think it is. And I've got to be honest with you, me and Tony had a hell of a time. Uh, there was a huge audio delay. I'm in the UK, Tony's in Mexico. It was like four or five seconds. Uh, so we were dripping over each other, waiting for each other, awkward silences. But hopefully I can edit it together and make it somewhat flowing. So apologies in advance. I'm sure it's just about passable. <laughs> and next week we'll do better. All right, all the best. Enjoy the episode. Right, let's just talk shit for a bit. <laughs> what number are we on? <laughs> See what happens. Could be yeah. fucking eyes are like fizzles in snow. <laughs> <laughs> what number are we on? 13? I don't know. Are we on 13? Yeah, we are. Yeah. Let's say, yeah. I, I'm, I think so. We'll edit it out, you know. <laughs> right here we go let's go so welcome to episode 13 of the Chippy Tea Podcast <laughs> Chippy Tea Podcast <laughs> shit yeah we've got you forget the name of what fuck it I'm gone mate I've been awake about four minutes <laughs> oh, fuck you now and to clarify to everybody watching you are in Mexico and what time will it be? It'd be like 5 a.m. Just gone five. Just gone five a.m. Yeah. Um, so Not yeah, it's a bit. Not um, it's a bit. It's a bit strange. Yeah. Well, the, the alternative <sighs> is you're me doing this at midnight, uh, and you're sort of early morning. So if you do six a.m., it'll be midnight for me. And trust me, you don't want me on record on record after a few beers at midnight. <sighs> <laughs> this like is a lot old. safer. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, this is a lot safer. <laughs> that got to be our best episode. <laughs> it, would be, it would be definitely. Yeah. So we're on episode thirteen <laughs> of uh, Chippy Tea Podcast uh, with me, Tony Palmer from Palm Print, and Danny D from Flipping Sweet. Pink up, pink. Yeah, I've got it. I've got it. Smooth, smooth as butter. We're both off his tits today. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, 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 an irrelevant, no, irrelevant, no, it's just a nice, easy chat about... Uh, it what is a bit irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> a nice, easy chat about what we did this week. Uh, looking back at uh, something screen print related, but that's not necessarily the case. <laughs> Sometimes they're not. Uh, so we will start the week. Like we always do. And we throw the question over to Danny of exactly what his week's contained of and what have you been worrying about this week, Danny? Worried about this week. Well, a little bit a little bit of news, which was exciting yesterday, but today has kind of dampened down. I hope that was something you were dropping, not a trump. <laughs> I can hear it. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I heard that. Um um, so I went to view a new unit. I went to view a new space yesterday. Did you? Um, wow. Yeah. It just popped up. So throughout this year, I've just sort of, I've not necessarily been actively out looking for new spaces, but I've had my eye open. And, you know, yeah. when things, when something pops up, I've been having a look. A uh, space popped up yesterday. Um, it ticks quite a lot of boxes. Everything looks Pretty okay, really. It's right next to a fishing pond, which is somewhat ground, dangerous ground, because ground floor. You could, you could. Ground floor. It's. Um, I don't know how to describe it. Really, it's like old. A, you go fishing. Very. I, I I used to before I became a screen printer, and it took over oh, my really life. <laughs> but it definitely a uh, definitely a little bonus for my weekends. But anyway, it's. Um, Six sort of boxes, very similar sort of building to this. It's an old building, but it's ground floor and it's it's spaced out. So this building that I'm in now is four rooms, and 
the four rooms could just about fit a manual. But if I want to stretch to an auto, which I might have mentioned in the past, I do actually want to get an auto one day. No, you never said that. No, um, it we should have said that earlier. I'd, I'd, I'd keep no, it out for one for you. I don't like to go on about these things. <laughs> I don't like to go on about these things. Um, if I were to fit an auto in this building, it would literally be touching wall to wall. Um, so yeah. it'd be pretty useless. Whereas this new building, probably the same amount of space, but spread out. So I could fit an auto in there. I um, So I went last night, had a look. I said to the fella, leave it with me. Let me come back in the morning with my dad, just to get a second opinion. Because it's always good to have a second set of eyes in case you miss something. My head's a bit scatterbrained at the minute anyway. My head's all over the shop. So I just wanted yeah. that second set of eyes, just to, you know, in case I've just forgot something. Because you've got to, when you go to another, when you take a print shop into a building, you've got to tick a lot of boxes. You've got to make sure the electric's right, the plumbing, the uh, heating, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. The stumbling block is this. It turns out the water drainage goes to two places. It either goes into the pond or it goes into a septic tank. And I think both, I mean, the pond is an automatic it's write-off. A no, no. It's a no-no, uh, you can't decide until 100% no-no. The septic tank, again, is something that I'm pretty close to saying is also a write-off. So the way I understand it, a septic tank is full of crap. And at the bottom of this tank, it's full of biomes, he described it to me. Microbiomes or something. And these biomes are basically degrading and eating away at all the crap. And it just, you know, it it composts, whatever, whatever word you want to use. Yeah. Now, he did say... My, my concern with that is introducing any type of residue chemical from the screen cleaning process. Yeah. Now, obviously, there's a certain amount of filtering can be done. Um, yeah, so that's just solid. But there's only so much you can do. So, yeah, no solids go through. I mean, we have a we have a filter to catch any solids, any bits of tape, any uh, any emulsion that hasn't fully degraded. Um, mm. No ink goes through. Ink gets washed. Usually on press, I usually just paper towel it out on press before it even goes into a washout booth. It's just a concern and an issue that um, I have to look into before I can say yeah, basically. Yeah, but we're talking about thing. half an hour ago, so. Oh, yeah, you've got to look at um, yeah the quantity of water that you use, and we all yeah. We've all we're all aware that we're constantly using water. Certainly in this process, it's a it's a very water based process. Um, unlike mm. you, it's, yeah. it's a water based process. <laughs> I've had a dabble this I know, week. I saw, I've had a dabble. Week I saw, I saw, that's another story. Um, and yeah. I think it's brought it home to me this week how much we use, and for the strangest of reasons. So I'm in a I'm in a. a a dealership, a, a supplier. These guys that I'm, the yeah. people I'm working with this this week are suppliers. They're the suppliers of everything, and they're really, really huge over in Mexico. And um, they've got, they took delivery of a, a CTS, and I've been helping them sort of like get to grips with it, find out the, the nuances of it. They're not going to be making screens, but they're going to be selling this CTS, so they need to understand how it works. Yeah, and just. We also needed to make 14 screens for the exhibition I'm doing FESPA, uh, FESPA Mexico today. And uh, All right. so I said, well, perfect example on how to do this. Get all your guys around and I'll show them how, how we make the screens. And they don't have a washout booth plumbed in. But they have two 200 litre drums. One will which will suck the water out into right. the jet wash. And one which basically using five gallon drums we empty the waste out. And I made about right. I made about eight screens doing my usual normal everyday method, giving no thought at all to um I'm talking posh yeah. hearing the voice. <laughs> giving no thought to how much water are we using. <laughs> no thought at all. That we're using. <laughs> no, I expect so it. um <laughs> The, the jet wash started making funny. <laughs> yeah, jet wash started making a funny noise. I'm like, what's that? I looked and I'd used half 
of the 200 litre drum. So that meant for about Bloody seven or eight screens, right. I've used 100 litres of water. My fuck. It's that, that's it? a hell of a lot of water for this process. And I actually thought about to have yeah. conversations in the dip tank, you know, for developing. So all I'm doing is developing. I'm yeah, not, yeah. I'm not reclaiming, I'm just developing. And um, it's crazy. Wow, so if it was that much, just, just rinsing. developing. Just rinsing them off. Wow, yeah. Waiting, rinsing them off, waiting, that's rinsing crazy. them off. Then it worked out at least 100 litres. You don't... Which, when you see it, is a big You don't really... I'm going to say, you don't really appreciate it because it just comes out of a tap. It's a, usually, you've got a direct hose to a, a tap and it just goes, you know, you don't really notice it, but that's crazy. That's a huge amount when of water. When you see that, so that maybe drum some dwindling senses, down. Yeah, and you visually see it. Maybe in some senses, the old dip tank argument is, is probably... Um, in some ways, eco economically, economically, um, environmentally, ethically, <laughs> environmentally, but also <laughs> cost effective. There's some, lot, there's some more ease we can throw in there. Well, if you if you're on a meter, yeah, uh, yeah, you want to be careful, don't you? <laughs> oh, absolutely, especially Have from the auction. A couple of dip tanks. We'll be we'll be bypassing. Ah, yeah, I'm not believing. Why? Dodgy little cable. <laughs> yeah, that so uh, the the clear. dip tank idea, the dip tank idea is uh, is not bad, eh? Appealing. And you know, throughout my entire career, I've never used one for developing. But I first saw it in no, real life no. down at um, you know the guys at Monster Press. So yeah, yeah, uh, I have everybody in use there, <laughs> and they they threw it in there just forgot it for two or three minutes, maybe five, and then oh, yeah. it came out it was just like. Came out lovely. So, you see, yeah, it's, it's I always a, find an argument for it. I always find there's a time limit. So, my dip tank, my plain water dip tank, and my chemical dip tank, I time it to bang on a minute, both processes. So, yeah. if you leave, and for both, for exact same reason, if you leave it in too long, um, the emulsion will start to drop out um, by itself. It'll start to drop and dilute the tank. Now, if you've got a clean water tank for exposing images, you definitely don't want any, di- any dilution of emulsion in that. So a minute, I just find a mi- but it's, I suppose it's going to be emulsion dependent, but I just find for mine, bang on a minute is a sweet spot. And then you pull the, pull the screen out, sit it, sit it in the, dip, in the um, washout booth, and it literally just falls out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I didn't know uh, you used a, a, I, I, a, I think a developing I've, dip tank. I thought you said you didn't. you didn't use a developing dip tank. Yeah, I thought I thought you didn't use one. You actually no, no, do. I, no, no, I, yeah, I, no, no, yeah. I use I use plain water, and I use a yeah. motion stripper. So I've got two. All right, screen in each. Um, yeah, I've always preferred the method of rinsing out your screen by dipping it because it just falls out. It just literally. Oh, I think, like I've said it before, I could literally just blow the image out with yeah, with a sharp <laughs> breath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so, I'm, I'm definitely a convert after after this, um, yesterday. I'm definitely a convert, and I shall be putting yeah. into stuff that I recommend for when I go to place. Always learning, always learning, yeah. never stops. Still, after all this time, still. <laughs> so, this Mexican print shop, are you going to tell me they're printing water based? Because that must be hard work and. A humid, humid country such as Mexico. So last time I was here um, was it's really strange being here again. Um, and I've just lost you. Are you still there? Have you? Yeah, I'm still here. I can hear you. Okay, I can't see you at all. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? On screen. Yeah, I can hear you. So we're doing all right. Um, oh, yeah, right. the last time oh, I was right. here uh, was pre-pandemic. In fact, this place, right. this hotel even, has a has a memory for me that um, sat at breakfast, reading the, watching the Spanish TV news, and seeing the English subtitles underneath coming across the screen about a virus in China uh, right. causing some, some some issues. And I remember saying to my friend at the time, "It's like that'll never come over here, will it?" I'm like, "No, no, it's in China." Don't worry. <laughs> 
pretty much ten days later, the whole world was shut down. Uh, so, <laughs> oh <laughs> god, Mexico still has that sort of memory for me, and um, it's it's really strange. Surprised you've gone back. <laughs> well, we're still wearing masks, so um, still masks. Are, uh, really? Masks All are, right. Yeah, and that's strange to get used to again. You know, you, I heck. You sort of. We've had so long yeah. with no masks, um, but strangely, there's no no um, conditions to meet when coming in. So there's no testing, there's no vaccination. Right. Um, thing that's just basically turn up, don't matter. Uh, but then when you get here, put a mask on. So uh, yeah. it's a uh, yeah, it's a, just a strange one. But so you're there to set up a show. A great place. As, yeah, so we're doing uh, we're doing Fespa. This is. Um, this is, so before the pandemic, this is what I did a lot of traveling and, and setting up shows and, and running and supervising a show. Because usually, if when you as a customer go to a, a show, you want to see a machine running. You know, you want to see if you're going to yeah. look at buying an auto, you want to see them all running. Usually, they're all there there's the green one, the blue one, the other blue one, and all, all the red ones, and all the ones in between. And you want to see them running so that you can get yeah. a really good idea of what you're going to buy because there's a bit of big one for money. And um, that's what I used to do is go and help them set up and run the press to show off the press. Um, the the yeah. issue we normally have is getting a print and putting a print on. Well, we're printing in front of basically 99% of printers. And we're right bastards, yeah. really. We're, we're going to come across to a print on that <laughs> show. And the only thing we're going to look at that's out of reg. It's a reg. <laughs> yeah. Or, or is that a leak? Or, you've got too much pressure on that. Oh, fuck off. You want to buy it or not? <laughs> so uh, it, it's always a, a high pressure thing, printing for your peers, basically. And um, yeah. I used to do it, and, I, and we haven't done it for a while because so there hasn't been any shows. So I'm over here doing it for this, uh, this dealer over here. And normally, to give you some sort of idea, normally... Uh, a, a press at a show will be about 20 foot by 10 foot or 20 foot square or 40 foot by 10 foot. So we're looking at underneath 500 square foot. And yeah. I locked into this one on the first day, three days ago. It's five and a half thousand square foot. Jeez. Five and a half? <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't they obviously nice. don't just sell um print machines, they sell embroidery machines and they sell sublimation machines and yeah. everything else. So it's a it's a big deal. This this is a big supplier. But as soon as I saw that, we're like, oh shit, I've got my work cut out here. So um That's a factory it in itself. Be. It is, yeah. Some some places aren't even five thousand square foot. Yeah. Like, I worked it out, it says, oh, it's it's, no, it's about five hundred square meters. I'm doing all the calculations and I got it. Roughly on Google to be about five thousand per square foot, which is Bloody a God. big place. So, yeah, it's going to be a it's yeah. going to be a good show. Hopefully, um, a lot of people. I honestly thought, do you go to many shows? There's one in England. It's a uh, big promotion in January. I, not winter. I, I've never been. Never been. It's never some of this really struck me as a. Uh, a good ta- a good investment, to be honest. It just seems like a bit of a go around and look at machines and stuff like that. If I had a lump of money to buy a machine on the day, I'd t- t- certainly consider it. I know I know they do quite often sell machine like literally the machines on the floor. Sure, special. Um, yeah. They can often sell them there and then. Yeah, yeah, and get a, you get a good deal on it. Um, yeah. My budget won't stretch to anything. I, I won't even get a showroom special. I'll be a uh, I'll be getting it used, so it's really just. And I know a lot of people just treat it as a bit of a uh, a networking yeah. event, as <laughs> as you call it. Which yeah, a networking event. I'm just not very social, so. You don't like people. So, so no, I've never been. Right. Never. <laughs> well, I'd never. I would recommend you go no, to no, the. No. I'd recommend <laughs> you go to the Birmingham one. Yeah, it's in. It's usually in January. All right. Uh, but my just once, just go once, just to see, but. My biggest issue yeah, just, with the trade just, shows, yeah. certainly lately, is they've turned into fashion shows. So they seem to be all about buying yeah. blanks and not about buying the products. Certainly in England, I think the 
last year was one of the first ones where there was no printing press to roll manuals um, because the cost is no. horrendous to the to the people wanting to put an auto yeah. into a into a showroom. So basically, you got you got to buy the auto, pay for that. Then you got to pay somebody to break it down, or pay somebody to transport it, and pay somebody to build it, and then pay for the floor. Uh, exhibition places are. If you want to make money, forget the screen printing, lark. Forget your GPT uh, <laughs> LED. It's um, get an exhibition space. <laughs> just get a venue. They'll charge an yeah. absolute <laughs> fortune just for the floor space. And you know, I, I need a I need yeah. a, a plug socket. Have we got a plug socket? Yeah, it's a thousand pound, please. What? For, for a plug socket? <laughs> I go to Argos and get one for thirteen quid. No, no. If you want it from us, it's, it's a thousand. Wi-Fi? You want Wi-Fi? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it's just a thousand a day. That's all. Everything's about a thousand pounds. So it, it's expensive <laughs> to put on a show. So this one that I'm doing now, obviously, is going to cost a fortune. So we've got to get it right. And yeah, um, yeah. when will this go out? Uh, oh, I better be careful what I say. <laughs> <laughs> this goes out in a few hours. I've got to edit the bug. I know, yeah. I end it there. The artwork, <laughs> the artwork has been provided for us. Uh, the the people over here did a print sample, obviously, which is great great practice. They've set it up and put it on the press and printed yeah. it. Really happy with it. And yeah. I've done a print yesterday, and it's okay. And everybody gathered round, and to yeah. a fucking one, to a T, they all said it was shit. <laughs> so I'm stood there oh, with me, no. with me English pride <laughs> on display, uh, and they all to to one in in every language you can think of all said oh. shit we don't like it. it's shit it's shit it's shit what do you think about this oh, no, it's shit <laughs> so I'm sort of Bugger. stuck in a rock and a hard place now because the show opens today and uh, nobody likes the print that we've brought <laughs> oh. and is there nothing you can do to tweak it is it not just a certain colours are not vibrant enough or, or is it just for design this looks crap I feel like I feel like I've had this argument already with everybody else, but I'll do it with you as well because it's good practice. Right. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> um, because they've been, uh, we'll go. We'll do a little bit of technical stuff now. Yeah, we'll go technical because this is like a screen print. Place. Yeah, right. Go for it. So yeah, the the it's printers topical. that we're using over here do not like CTS. They're not a fan of it at all. Right. They're old school film. And do it the old way. Film position unit, even, not even a film position unit. Yeah. They 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 can put a film on a screen in the perfect place. They don't need a computer to do it. For. And with right. the, the MHMs that I'm here with, it's all about pre-registration, so that I can show that if the base, I can take one base screen out and put another base screen in, yeah. and have no registration issues and just continue printing. So that's like the selling point of the machine. Yeah, yeah. There's no other machine can do it where you can just yeah. live swap a, a, a printing screen and not looking through the mesh and setting it up, just putting it back in the same place. Yeah. Um, Zero so yeah. that's what I'm I'm pushing for and selling is the, the fact that we can do that. And the, the the guys over here are not happy. So no, just no. to get to the point where we can print some screens here with CTS. They've had to convert their artwork and they've done it three times and every time they did it wrong. Just didn't do it, like I said. Mm. And then they're doing it their way, doing it our way. We do it, this is how we do it. This is how we do it for film. I got some files through. Now yeah. I can work with TIFFs, I can work with PSDs, I can work with anything. I got data files, .dat. And I got fucking right. <laughs> so, so we've had to do some converting. And when I've printed it out, I think we've lost some dots. It's a pure tonal image. Uh, and I think we've lost some dots. So yeah. what we end up with is not as bright as the sample they gave. Now, I think the art's different. So basically, my our job as printers is, here's the artwork, please reproduce it. That's it. So yeah. I've yeah. set the press yeah. up uh, to do exactly what it's supposed to do, which is reproduce the art that I've been given. And they're like, well, you don't know why the sample. Well, no, it's because some bastards cheated. And there's more dots <sighs> in this sample. So I'm thinking, have I fucked up the exposure? Have I lost some dots on exposure? Because, again, we didn't know how long to expose for. Um, 
So no. I'll bring up the art on my computer. No, what I'm printing is an exact replica of the art. And then from, from nowhere, we get a photo of the sample. There's 30% yeah. more dots in this sample. I'm like, oh, but shit. I, can, I can recreate, but I can't. I, I haven't got some dots in my pocket that I can just pull out. But no, I can't They're magic. just not there. I can't magic them out. No. I don't know what to do. They're not there. <laughs> so now we're in the middle of a fight now uh, with the, uh, the guys in, uh, in Mexico doing the art. And they're saying, no, no, we did this and we did that. So, technical bit. When we print onto film, we're printing with a liquid ink onto a polyester surface carrier. This polyester surface yep. has got a little bit of a, uh, uh, of a a film on it, which is supposed to stop the ink from spreading and running. If you've ever put film in the wrong side of a printer, yeah. you know, the wrong way around, and printed on it, you'll see it just pulls. And yeah, just yeah, it just goes everywhere. So it's crap. So yeah. the whole point of the coating, the matte side, is to to stop that. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't stop it 100%. It reduces it. So what we end up with, when we print a dot like that, we end up with a dot like that. It's a great picture yeah. for everybody yeah. that's listening on Spotify. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when we print a, a, a dot, we gain 10%. Everybody's heard about dot gain. We know what dot gain is. It's when the dots get bigger than what we actually see on the monitor. So yeah. if we're an old school printer, like these guys are here, you get to understand that and you reduce the dots in your art knowing that when you print onto a film, you're going, your dots are going to spread and get bigger by 10%, 15%, yeah. 12%, whatever it is. Then we go through yeah. the whole process of, of exposure. We lose a little bit, but not too much if we've got the diet times right. And then when we print again, we squash the ink out so we get a little bit of a dot in there. So they've nailed their process down to a fine art by printing onto film. Now, the CTS right. that we're using is a wax printer. So we're taking hot wax, passing it through 256 little holes and printing a pattern directly onto the screen. Yep. This wax has to be heated up, so it's hot wax. Then it gets spat out through the nozzles. It hits the cold screen. When it hits the cold screen, it solidifies straight away. So we get right. virtually zero dot gain. So we get a perfect reproduction of what's on the screen. Yeah. So what well, he said, interesting, they're like, right, sarcastic bastard, but I'll, I'll let it fly. <laughs> no, honestly, I genuinely, I, 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 no, I genuinely, uh, I'm interested. I never realised so, well, wax was used for that purpose. Yeah. So uh, if you've seen the, the sort of like the, there's three main uh, manufacturers, there's uh, Exile, the Spider, uh, over here, Dalfit, do a unit, yeah. and Kiwo, CTS, do a, do a unit as well. It's all basically the same unit, which is taking a uh, hot wax, Taking wax, heating it up, putting it under pressure, and forcing it through a very fine print head, which results in mm -hmm. a very opaque melted wax. Then this hot wax hits the cold screen and it solidifies straight away. So there's no dot gain. Mm. And I think that's where the problem is now. Trying to explain that to someone who doesn't speak English is, a, is an issue. But um, yeah, yeah. The only so they've overcompensated in the setup. Well, yeah, they've reduced the amount of dots that are there or the size of the dots that are there because they know when they print it onto film, all those dots will grow in size by 10 to 12%. And that happens yeah, with all yeah. screen prints. It happens with all printers. If you've ever done a really tight registration job and you've cut the base back, just the gnats, you know, right. everybody's got their own... Uh, favourite for how much they pull the base back and we'll ask you yours what's yours yeah yeah sorry say that again I oh, was reading this <laughs> uh, uh, how much do you pull what back you can't you can't because <laughs> the, the pitch call is dead low and I was just literally looking at there's like a little toggle to turn it to low data board and I, I was left listening and I'm reading that at the same time right so, I, 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 I do, do listen to I do you. waffle on I do waffle on sometimes Danny it's alright don't worry <laughs> So, so how much do you? Well. How much do we? So how much do you cut your base back? Yeah. Um, I think it's a pixel, roughly. I think pixel between a pixel and a pixel and a half. I think. What do you work in Photoshop? What do you mean or in Illustrator? film steps? Photoshop. What does John work in Photoshop? 
<laughs> <laughs> so uh, it all, that usually it depends on the resolution of the file. So I think 300 DPI, it's two yeah. pixels. But everybody's got their own favorite. It does like best right. flavor of crisps, you know. It doesn't really make any difference. Yeah. Uh, some people use three yeah. pixels on a 300 DPI right. image if they're using a manual with, let's say, dubious registration. But you've yeah. got a you've got a brand new spanking new manual, haven't you? Which is I presume holds a lot better registration than, than the, the one you. Oh yeah, done. bulletproof, bulletproof. Well, it takes a bit of, takes a bit of working out once you've got it in place. So it's not budging; it's solid. Yeah. So so you can afford to be quite fine and, and go back a pixel. Uh, in Illustrator, yeah. uh, the the sort of standard is zero point three five points uh, cut across the center, so it's. 0.175 either side or whatever the maths is on that. Either side, um, yeah, yeah. Because it's, yeah. it's centered stroke. Um, yeah. So, it, it, you know, it, it sort of, if you really have cut it back when you put it onto film, and then when you hold the two films up, you'll see that there's a little bit of brown edge to the, to the film where it just spreads just a little bit. Certainly if you're cutting back a base, I'm leaving a space in the middle. Yeah, yeah. You, you might notice yeah. a little bit of, of bleed, and then when you expose, you burn that away a little bit. So you know, <clears throat> depending on your technique, <clears throat> you've got a way of doing it so that you get the best result. Um, I often yeah. liken it also to. Have you ever? Do you do four color process? Same way, okay, on to white. Uh, very, very rarely. Very rarely. I have got a job coming up, and it's four color process and two spot colors. Yeah. Um, which I'll be doing next week. So that'll be interesting. That'll be fun. So I always find on CMYK, just... the black is really heavy. No matter who does the sets, no matter what, yeah. the, the computer picks Difficult, out yeah. a lot of black. So my my default yeah. setting, if, I, if I'm using something like John or if I'm doing it myself, is always to cut the base back, uh, the black back by 10%. So reduce the black strength by 10%. I do that as a default on all my CMYK. Yeah. Because it's always too heavy, and and if I want more black, mm. I need more pressure or more angle, and more, and, and, and actually push yeah. it more through. So it, it's yeah, that's my that's my way of doing CMYK. Now someone else yeah. will have a different way, and they might not cut the black back, or they might always cut the magenta back because they don't like it being too red. Uh, and this is this yeah. is what I'm up against now in this situation, is that these guys have a, a method of always. Um, producing art like this because they print it onto their film using their printer and expose it using their, their emulsion. So they know that if they if they make it exact an exact copy, it looks too too light. So they increase yeah, everything yeah. by 10%, knowing that they're going to lose it in the process. Yeah. Just setting away a little bit, I guess, and the preparation, they're doing it the way they always have done. And it's just it's just a bit of a shit look that that doesn't work and something it's just an oversight i suppose if you want to i think if, they'd not, that, done, if uh, they'd not done the, the same processes at their place using their film mm -hmm. and their processes then they'd be happy with the result but because everybody's seen this, this, this they've seen the best it looks like it's been yeah. double pulled on everything and pushed, you know and print flash print flash, yeah. print flash print flash print flash i'm like oh, no don't do this to me. so the image itself actually looks okay <laughs> and it looks good it's just uh it just doesn't match what they want. They've seen better. Yeah, but there's a right it's a time, that, bit of me, it's a bug when that a little happens. bit of me here from, from, from Wakefield that says, fuck it, I may have to sell the machines, not to sell the fucking print. Nobody's here yeah. to buy this print. Everybody just wants to see what the machine does. Nobody gives a toss what print it is. Yeah. Nobody's going to buy it. It's not for a customer. It's no. just to show off for somebody's no. ego. I know, and it's, I mean, the... The output of a print, the final print, isn't necessarily a reflection of the machine. Yeah. It's more what's happened in screen room, like you say, the CTS and the the film and all and the, the, the artwork preparation. So it's yeah. sort of it's sort of shooting yourself in the foot, really, if you go too complicated. I stick some vector out on me, bugger it, just put some text MHM, <laughs> <laughs> MHM printed with an MHM. It's right. Good. Arm print makes it it's, re, it's read really good. Yeah. <laughs> Buy this, it's really good. 
<laughs> Bog yeah, off. I'd... Buy one, get one free. Yeah, I, I think Buy one, get one free and give the other to Danny at Chip it from Flip his wheel. So is it a full weekend show then? Well, I'm here for a week uh, doing the preparation and the takedown and everything. But the show starts today. Yeah. What, what, I have no idea what day we are. Uh, Thursday. Uh, and it's a three day show. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, mate. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Well, oh, well, I have to know. say over here, I have to say over here, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. <laughs> I'm going to have to learn a posh voice, aren't I? Yeah, I think when voice, people listen to this it. podcast, they can understand you. It's just me they can't understand. <laughs> Did you know it does captions? It automatically generates um, subtitles. YouTube. Yeah. Now, I struggle to believe they're accurate. <laughs> if they're oh, accurate, you, you, you that should is read serious they're, MI5 they're awesome. shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, mine I'll have to sit and watch your, your episode once. <laughs> yeah, I thought they might be like... <laughs> I could go and put my own in, but bleeding hell, it takes me long enough to just ep- edit the episode as it is. Never mind, add my subtitles. No. Edit? Edit. I left you a little subtitle in the last episode. I don't know if you noticed it. I say edit. I mean, just put an intro and an outro. Now that we've got our own theme tune... Oh, we've got to talk about that. that. That's awesome. Chippy tea. Isn't it? Apart from, (laughs) there's a lyric which I had to carefully sort of edit the the, the song and use a certain part of it as the intro and a certain part as the outro. And I had to edit edit out the word Lancashire. Because we're know, not yeah. bloody Lancashire. <laughs> I know, yeah. It, it's from a... It's, from it's a, a Lancashire-based uh, band. And they call the Lancashire Hot Pots, aren't they? Uh, and uh, anyone yeah. that knows where we're from, we're from Yorkshire. They're from Lancashire. And if we go right back to the, the War of the Roses, we don't like them. Over other side over, other, other side at Pennines. We don't get on they're right. wrong side at Pennines. <laughs> no, they're on the wrong side at Pennines. So, no. Uh, yeah, but but the, the guys have been really nice and let us, uh, let us use their little song, so... Big shout out to uh, Lancashire Hot It's so, it's Lancashire Hot Pots. It's just so fitting. It was fantastic. I remember you were sending me and I just thought, bloody hell, like we've got to make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> we have noticed behind you that you've got your um, little artwork oh, behind you there. Check that out. All right. It's all right about it now. Did you see a little that? bit of an Instagram My story of you, uh, of you building it? Yeah. And, and who, moved, who moved the project? A little time lapse. Come on. Well, I, I bought an old school, like a literal, a school projector that they'd have in oh, assembly HP. for lyrics when you're singing hymns, gears, oil in my lamp and all that. And uh, yeah, an OHB. And I sat it on my tunnel dryer, I put logo against wall, and we started doing outline. And then RJ takes a step back and says, Danny, it's moved. And what was happening, the head was just ever so slightly like dropping over time. So we had to like speed trace the bugger and keep going, running back and maneuvering it back up. Oh, it's a nightmare. I'm not taking up time. Where did you find find an old OHP? Where did you find that? eBay. eBay. 20 quid. What a bargain. I'm going to flog it for 30. (laughs) 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 I won't mention the fact that the head slowly drops. Yeah, it just slowly goes like that all day. Like, Like an old man falling asleep. If you've got a school, <laughs> perfect for school, fine. Yeah, I, I think they've no moved on from them is. days now. They've got like whiteboards. They probably have, they're, yeah. they're a little bit more advanced now. They haven't got that TV. Remember that TV that used to wheel out with, with side parts on it that used to come out? Aye, that's right, yeah. <laughs> so Aye, I know, it's this big black plastic thing. Aye. It was to stop reflection off God windows, knows. I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, God knows. I mean, you stick VHS in. Put a little video on. Sex education tapes in. That's the way it was. <laughs> I always find this, right? This, pub, this probably says a lot about me. But as a child, I don't know. This, this, this probably says a bit about me. As a child. So I don't know if uh, back in your day, it was only a few years before me. Uh, back in, we, used to, we used to have to sit down on assembly floor and you used to have to sing hymns that were like projected onto a wall. And you'd like sing the hymns and there was all these... Christian hymns and stuff like this. And I remember once getting told off as like a six or seven year old because I won't sing them. And they asked me why I won't sing them. And I, and I said, 
something like, well, how do you know I'm a Christian? I might not be. Like, surely it's up to me to decide. Why are you forcing me to sing Christian songs? So as a switched on seven-year-old, I was buying into this indoctrination. Check you <laughs> not out. saying it's right or wrong, but I'm just saying I was a very critical child. <laughs> yeah. Probably yeah says you're a, a problem child. We call it a problem, not critical problem child. Basically, I was a little shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't. So we had to do. And the, you wonder um, why I dropped out of school. <laughs> yeah, we had to do the the hymns, but we didn't. We didn't have them projected on the wall. We weren't. We were supposed to learn the words. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, you, yeah, we yeah. we maybe all a generation Christian soldiers and all that. Past, past the point of actually learning. In fact, I think I the time I was <laughs> the time I was born in, the guy who wrote "Onward, Christian Soldiers," he was from the same town. <laughs> I think that's on the, as you enter my town, I think that's that's one to think. Welcome to the home of onward right. Christian soldiers. Oh, awesome. bloody hell. <laughs> God. Pulling all out all trivia today. <laughs> yeah, just all shy. Right, it? it is early. What are we on? No, oh, we're, we're doing all it right is. for time now. So I'm 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 coming around a little bit. I, I keep looking at the little picture that I'm Picking watching up. here and I'm sure my eyes are closed. They look like pistols in snow. <laughs> but, I don't know, I can't see. It'll be fine. But don't you see yeah. anything? So it was a good. No, nah, you're just a a, a pix. You're a pixel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, that was a fun little project. I took some paint about and traced it. It was the bottom. If you look at the actual photo, see, I'm lucky because when I take pictures of me printing, the logo will be quite blurred in background, so you won't mm. be able to pick at me, uh, me fuck ups. But the higher <laughs> it got, the worse the actual tracing is because. My arms were dropping off for a start because I, I don't have anything to stand on. So I was like reaching up and painting it. Um, I had like a little step ladder, but it only goes so far. And the wall's rough as out because that wall here, down middle brick of wall. it used to be a chimney breast. Yeah, it's a brick wall, but there also used to be a chimney breast. And that's chimney breast, which used to obviously protrude. And that's been knocked out. So it's just like raw, chipped off bricks. So it's it's not even slightly flat. It's rough as old. So it was uh, it looks yeah, fine for me. a bit bit of a difficult job. It looks it good. So you basically, me. you're thinking about moving out. You're looking at a new place. So the first thing you thought you'd do is paint the fucking wall thought, in the place you're in. <laughs> yeah. Well, I said to Jasmine, we started printing this bugger. And I said to Jasmine, I bet any money a unit comes up. Finished painting it. The very next morning, my mum so shows me this uh, listing for a new unit. Like, the very next morning. And I said that it, I said it'd be just bloody typical. I've done all this work and then I have to go do it all again. That's I mean this new unit it. I'm looking at is all it's uh, this new unit I'm looking at it's got a lot of work that needs to be done. It needs a full paint and, and like a proper good tidy up. And I've got if I to, if I were to tech it, I would have until the first of November to get it all painted, decorated and moved in. Uh, because mm. I'd be paying rent on the 1st of November. And to do all that, and to still run a print business, I've still got to keep printing. And then I've yeah. got to keep, there's got to be maybe a weekend where I rent a van and then get all the print press and all that gear over on a day or two, just to have as minimal disruption as possible. It's going to be a massive, massive job for me. I'll be buggered. But if I, if, if I go for it, I'll make it work. I'll just... I'll just keep going until it's done, but it's a lot to ask, so it's not hundred percent set in stone that I'll take this place. Moving is awful. It's one of the most stressful say, jobs, isn't it? You've got to try and keep I I I've, I've been involved in quite a lot of machinery moving and uh, and, and premises moving. And like you just said there, if you're a print shop, that's where all your money's from, that's where your income comes from. So you can't just turn it yeah. off for a week. Yeah. You know, because you, you, you don't have any money. You can't stop. Uh, and I've been, you know, I've been known to try and fit stuff in the weekend. Even, even over in in, in the states, the guy bought a dryer, you know, to replace his old one. Uh, and he's like, "Well, can we do it in the weekend?" Yeah. No. Well, I, I don't want to stop. I want to finish on Friday and then come in on Monday and start with the new press. Well, no, it's going to take us three days. Yes. Can you do it in two? Well, even if we could do it in two, yeah, we'll take yeah. your old one out, put the new one in. Get it all fired up. I hope that there isn't a fucking butterfly bolt that's made in 
southern Taiwan that's not with the, that's, yeah. that's missing out of the whole thing. <laughs> you know, the one thing that holds it all together yeah. is usually missing. Uh, I mean, to yeah. be fair, to be fair to the lads, they did actually did it and they, they built it and it was all running fine. But it's always a gamble. Yeah. It's always a risk. It's always somebody sat in the car. I think like best time. Oh, to- <laughs> <laughs> that's just my life in general that but yeah i think the best time to move is christmas for me anyway because christmas so typically what happens is end of november uh, end of november, usually mid november we have to start saying to customers about well, it now we can't fulfill this order till next year hmm. so christmas becomes uh december's busy super busy because you're getting the last of the orders out the door in time for Christmas, and then you have Christmas week off, obviously, which is dead. You don't, you don't do any. You know, I mean, I do a lot of work, but I don't do any printing. Um, mm. If this year's ought to go by, January will be dead. I had a nightmare I started the year, so you just stop making money. So if I was to move, ideally, if I could push it back until basically Christmas, I would do it over mm. Christmas. That'd be that'd be as pain free as possible. But the bloke, the bloke's got. People who want it, and they'll take it straight away with no hassle. Whereas I'm asking him to give me a bit of time. So we'll have to see. It's not like, like I say, literally half an hour before we started this podcast, I just pulled up in my van because I've just been there having a look. So I've got some contemplating to do tonight. And if it's meant to be, that's definitely one. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah, that's an issue. The last, yeah. the last thing anybody wants is a burst septic tank. <laughs> <laughs> that would not yeah. be ideal. <laughs> there must be lots of printers out there that use a septic tank. That, you know, certainly uh, the far-flung regions of like the states and stuff where you're not connected to a main supply. Mm. Um, it might be worth reaching out and, and asking if anybody's got a septic tank and there's any issues. Yeah, yeah. I, I, My I, only concern stick it, is stick it on just, Instagram. Yeah, I could do. Could I? Maybe it's, it's amazing how uh, helpful a lot of screen printers can be. You, you put actually, we did an episode, and I was talking about I was struggling with uh, the dehazer that I had, the, yeah. the, the the stain remover, and I had like three or four different screen print shops, most of them in the states, and not only did they message me, quite a few of them actually recorded it. I was like recording it and saying, "Oh." I can't do an American really? accent. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do an American accent then, but I'm not going to. I can't do it. But I was like, yeah, like here's how I, here's how we do it, and every every single one of them said the word magic sponge. Yeah, so that's an yeah interesting magic eraser. Thing. Have you yeah, ever the used magic the magic sponge? The, mm. the big over here, uh, and I go to shops with them, uh, but the last one I went to that had yeah. them, like you know, the big to Costco, and, like bought a bulk pack of these things. Bought a ton of them. Yeah. So I asked the question. A lot of people are saying these are good. Do they work? And um, the answer was absolutely yeah. they're awesome. They're awesome. So show me. Of course, oh, we, yeah, haven't yeah. Any, we haven't got any screens to yeah. clean today. We, we, we've done them all. Oh, damn. I, I really yeah. want to see it working. Is it as good as everybody says? So, yeah, we'll have to put that out there. We'll I would it. say it is, you know. Magic it razor. Is. Magic real, sponge. Real, real. You're confusing the two. Yeah. Magic sponge is what they used to give you when you broke your leg playing football. Oh, magic that's sponge it, yeah. came out yeah. and 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 <laughs> put some magic. Has he got a magic sponge? It'd be all right. It'd be fine. Yeah, just, just cold water and this magic sponge, yeah, yeah. and you were off running again. No magic eraser, I think they're called. That was it. Yeah, magic eraser. Yeah, they are good though. Very good. I um, if you combine using... it with so it's sort of yeah, yeah. We got a, so if you go on Amazon or yeah. any other distributor. Which let's let's face it, there's only one Amazon. Um, if you search for melanine sponges, so if you look for the branded magic eraser, that one's yeah. like the brand, and you'll get ten for a tenner. But if you search for melanine sponges, you'll get hundred for a tenner because that's Check basically you out exactly your money saving. Thing. It's tips. just not. It's not got a logo. Yeah, <laughs> <Check laughs> you out your money saving there. tips. Proper from your auction. <laughs> well, you've got to you've got to shop around, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> Times are hard. <laughs> but well, yeah, they're very effective. Using them. You, right, what I'll I do? What I'll I'll start using them? 
Yeah, and what I find is if so, if you put the hairs remover instead of like slapping it all off at shop with a sponge or like dropping a bit on or putting it in a spray bottle where a lot of it evaporates and you breathe it in, just put a tiny bit on your sponge and just rub it in and do circular motions one side, circular motions the other side. When you, it's amazing, you actually see the image disappear when you turn it around and do it a second time. It's so really, let, let's, really let's just start right at the beginning because I'm a little bit confused. Uh, so do a full Danny D video tutorial. Talk me through it from scratch. You take your dirty screen from press and talk me through the process. Right. Screen on that press via full of ink. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get me my press wash. I'm going to give it a spray. I've got a press wash in the bottle. I'm going to spray it. Well, obviously, I'm going to card out all the excess ink first. Yeah. And then I'm going to spray it with press wash, and I'm going to rag it down. I usually use scrap T-shirts, which I just cut up, just rag it down. And if, I've, if I'm short on scrap shirts, because I've had a particularly uh, effective week. week of not messing up, <laughs> yeah, I won't have any left. So I'll just use blue blue paper towels and just give it a give it a scrub, and I get every bit of ink out. Um, and I pay particular attention to making sure the mesh where the image is looks completely clear and there's no staining. Right. So, and the reason I do that is because sometimes them screens can sit downstairs for a couple of days. And if there's any staining in the ink, the, the longer you leave it, the worse it'll, the harder it is to get out at the end yeah. process. So, and then it goes downstairs into the washroom sits in a dip tank for a minute. Obviously, you've took all the tape off and everything. Uh, stick it in dip tank for one minute exactly because that's, the, for, for, for my emulsion, the timing of that means it'll soften the emulsion, but it won't start leaking into the tank and diluting the solution. Uh, and then just power wash it off. And I go top to bottom. Boom. If there's any staining left after that, um, which is usually usually a little bit. Get me magic sponge. Get me um, my new stain remover, which is called what? Oh, I forgot what it is now. It's like SR SR thirty from CCI. I think it's SR thirty, something like that. It's real good stuff. Okay. Um, CCI. Where are you buying that from? Put from a drop CCI in, in the UK. Um, I'm trying to think of a funny hand signal I can do, but I can't really come up with it. No, just say SB. the name, fuck it. They're Tony. probably not watching. Tony Waddle. Yeah, but I quite like that game. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I know, do it yeah. to protect anybody. I just do it because I enjoy the game. It's just fun. S? No. <laughs> That's an S, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go, yeah. So I get it from SBE, Tony. Um, I give it a go on it. And quite a few people messaged me to recommend that particular one, you see, after we okay. did that podcast. That was yeah. brought up. At least three or four people mentioned that one. Yeah, so put a drop in my sponge, circular motions, go off it all, one side, turn it around, do opposite side, and you'll you'll watch the image disappear. As you rub the second screen with your sponge, you're rubbing it out. You're literally magically erasing it. Um, power wash it off, degrease it, degrease it in a spray bottle, well, and then hang on, hang degrease the brush, hang which on a is a separate brush. Uh, how does that degreasing go again? I thought so. So we degrease my screen. So do you let it? Do you? I mean, I I tend to let it soak. I, I give it a I give it a brush with a, a clean separate brush, yeah. so there's no contaminants, cross contaminants yeah. between chemicals or anything like that. Um, give it a brush, leave it for a bit. And I'll usually do like a couple of screens at a time and then, well, after I've done a few, I'll go back to the first and then I'll rinse it down uh, yeah, top do to that. bottom. Ten. I do 10 at a time. Now, here's a, here's a, uh, here's a palm print tip for you. Don't okay. use a power wash to wash the degreaser. You want to put it onto a garden hose setting. And I'll tell you why, before Tony does. <laughs> because your washout booth... If you're power washing your washout move, it's going to splash back at the mesh in the screen and any contaminants from your ink remover or your haze remover or your emulsion or any just crap at bottom, it's going to splash back up into your freshly degreased mesh. 
So you're going to what contaminate it. Tip. And then well, when you go to court your emulsion... That sounds so professional. I don't know. Who told me that one? <laughs> <laughs> See, I do listen. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I can't even remember telling Most you that. So, so yeah, I'm, hats off to you. I, I think you've heard it from someone else and just attributed it to me. But, yeah, yeah, absolutely. No splashback in the, in the degreasing. When we're, when we're degreasing, it is the final stage. They are pristine. We're, we're getting rid of all the grease, all the contaminants, all the dust, all the bits of shit that's flying about. That's a technical term. Um, yeah, it, yep. it's, the, it's, the, it's the final bit. So, yeah, nice and clean. Low pressure, rinse, chase the bubbles down. I, I always sort of start at the top yeah. and chase the bubbles down. And when we get to the bottom, no bubbles, yeah. no fish yeah. eyes, none of that shit. Good. Hey, did you do a bit of a tutorial? My upgrade tip. It was all right, wasn't it? I've got one, one final upgrade. So for oh. degreasing process, I'm my next step is to have two washout booths. So I want a mucky washout booth which will yep. be for emulsion, ink, the ghosting, and then I'm going to have a degreaser booth, which will be absolutely spotless, crystal clear, uh, nothing will ever go into that screen other than degreasing solution. And uh, I'll have two separate hoses, side by side, and I might even have like, um, you know, you go to a butcher's and you see those clear curtains. I'll have one of them separating it yeah. between each booth. So there's no chance of any splashing you know, you know what I mean. It just keeps it completely. So that, that's, that's a bog standard normal setup. Yeah, clean and a dirt that, side. That, that's yeah, a, that's yeah. a, a bog standard normal setup. Most people do buy uh, two washout booths. One's illuminated and one isn't. So one of them yeah. is for developing yeah. and degreasing. So no dirt or grease or anything ever gets near it. And the other one is, as you saw, Yorkshire uh, pudding, yeah. the mucky one. <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> I didn't consider developing. I didn't think of that actually. That's probably a good point. Um, so developing maybe, the in maybe one. I should develop in the clean one as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's so the clean one, the developing one, mm. usually has a light at the back of it so you can see what you're developing. So they're normally illuminated. Yeah, uh, the the dirty one, it's just it's like a swamp. You know, it's where the it's where the screen goblin lives. And she's yeah, crap and shit. So it gets so mucky though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that would be my um, process. And I've been having a lot, I've, of, a I've lot had, of that stuff. Is just I've had quite a bit of a, of a discussion while I've been over here because there's, a, there's a, a few guys over here that I know uh, on the on the screen washing front. And I've got a guy selling uh, screen washing machines. So obviously, he thinks his machine is the best thing in the world, and it's fantastic and it's superb. And we're sat having a few. Uh, yeah. Field coronas and and, uh, and on a night and, and he's like, oh, my, my machine does this and I'm like, oh, machines are shit and he's like, oh, this machine's great and, and he's showing me these videos and pictures of his, uh, of his stuff and I'm like, yeah, it's still shit. Oh no, look, it's really good. And I don't like it. <laughs> it's just, and I, I still to this day <laughs> I haven't found uh, a screen washing system that's perfect. The guys. A couple of weeks back when I were in Florida, they've got a new one and they, they were putting their stuff through and they were coming out gorgeous. I mean, the, these screens were almost ready to cut. They were really good. But those yeah. guys were clean freaks anyway. So they did all the prep. They practically yeah. cleaned the screen before it went in, you know, as, as much as you can. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm still, I wish I was technically minded. I'd invent the machine that I want, which is basically... Imagine a yeah. robot arm coming along, dipping it in a dip tank, moving it along, pulling it out of the dip tank, and then another robot arm coming along and cleaning ah, it right. with, with, with a camera looking at for, for bits and going back to it and spraying it. And yeah. Then to another one and just yeah. another cold water rinse. Uh, but I'm not technically. Yeah. Minded, so oh. If anybody builds that from my design, at least buy me a pint if it's successful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I've never thought of that concept. I know they wash out the um, the car wash version. Like I say, there's always somebody at the end of it with a power wash because <laughs> yeah. it just yeah. has to be done. You see these uh, Amazon warehouses where they've got little oh. robots that are moving around all over the place, you know what I mean? And, and they all know where they're going. They're all yeah, intelligent yeah. and stuff. Let's just apply that to screens. <laughs> you know, put one on a little yeah, robot. Yeah. Right, okay, you're still dirty. Go back. 
<laughs> have another watch. <laughs> yeah, but the only trouble with that is them little robots cost about ten million each. <laughs> so <laughs> nobody's got that, that much money to do it yet. Listen, when we start, we start selling our, uh, yeah, get there, our, our chippy tea merch, we'll be millionaires anyway. We'll be able to afford it. Fuck Jeff Bezos, what does he know? <laughs> Jeff Bezos, man. Entrepreneur at year. Me and Tony P. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Off the back of Have you got a delay? Uh, chippy tea LED. Yeah, I've got a shit, a massive delay. Yeah. <laughs> It's but building like up. It's got worse, hasn't it? Miles. It's getting harder about and harder. 6,000 miles away, so... <laughs> I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna do a shirt show special question. Hang on, I've got a question oh, for you. Okay. <laughs> shirt show special. Are you ready? This is the, this is the question we ask on the shirt show, and I'm only asking this because you're in Mexico. What's for tea? Are you having burritos, tacos? Tacos. It's tacos. Mexico, tacos it's tacos. Everything's it's oh, yeah. always Taco Tuesday over here. I love the smell of street food and stuff in Mexico. You walk down the the street in any mm. road, and and it's it just hits you. This the onions, the meat, the the hot sauces, the peppers, the smells awesome, and you just want to eat at yeah. every food truck that you see. And I'm with a I'm with a, a big guy here, and he saw like you know, a big robust sort of three hundred pound monster. And yeah, I said, oh, and he's, he's from sort of Central America. I said, oh, I can right. can I have something from the street foods, you know, from the food trucks. I said, no. One rule, when in Mexico, never eat from the street food. I'm like, come on, you're why, from why? here. Why? Is that right? And you've got a big, massive constitution. Uh, Surely not. He said, no, no. I once eat from the street food. Uh, now I am in the hospital. So, really? No, <laughs> in hospital. From street food? Yeah. God, hell. But then in the same breath, yeah. he said to me, so for tea tonight, we're going to eat some street food. I'm like, no, 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 no. You just told me you ended up in hospital from it. No, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> See, no, no. Uh, good street food and bad street food. Because he talks like that because he's oh, from yeah. Dewsbury. <laughs> oh, right, he's from Dewsbury. <laughs> I'm going to say, I thought it was a posh accent. <laughs> so, in answer to your inane question, uh, yeah, it'll be tacos with some sort of meat filling and a sauce that makes you... Mouth feel like Satan's ball sack, like fire. Oh, I'm not a spice person at all. Anything. No? I couldn't even have like a spicy pot noodle. No, too much for me. I'm a very bland sack. person. <laughs> <laughs> I am, honestly. <laughs> you know, I, in all these episodes, I don't think I've ever actually had, which it'd be so fitting, a chippy tea. The end of episode. I, that I, I, seems to be the most obvious choice. I know, yeah. <laughs> I want to see you. I mean, especially We're where phonies. you are. I know, where We're you are. It. We, I want to see wrapped in newspaper, a massive piece of cod, <laughs> fried to it to death, mm. dripping in what can only be described as lard. <laughs> lard. <laughs> and, some, <laughs> and some chips. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to have it for my dinner. So watch my stories in about an hour. <laughs> I'm going to have a bag of chips on stories. Chippy tea. <laughs> yeah, I, try, I, now, now try explaining chippy tea to uh, to somebody in Central America. You know, and, and the English to sp- my Spanish is, my Spanish gets better with alcohol. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> after after about four Coronas, I think I'm fluent. I'm not. I'm, I'm probably just talking Fluent? Shy, but, yeah. Uh, uh, so try explaining uh, chippy tea. I've got a podcast, have you? What's it called? Chippy tea. Why? Oh god. Um uh yeah. well, <laughs> <laughs> We have this thing called the chippy. A chippy? Is this tacos? No. <laughs> oh no, I have to get up. Sorry. I remember I remember doing the episode I remember doing the episode with Shirt Show and uh I'll try to explain chips to them. And we ended up coming with the phrase freedom fries. Because it's the only thing that made sense to them. <laughs> freedom, freedom fries. fries. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you, some, some poor foreigner from a different country and we're sort of like, right, so what we do is on a Friday, we take some potatoes, we cut them into the biggest chunks you've ever seen, <clears throat> we deep fry them in lard, and then we wrap them in an old newspaper from yesterday and we eat them 
sat looking out at the sea, wishing <laughs> we were somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. But do they still sell it in newspapers? I wish people they saw it unhealthy. <laughs> yeah. They don't no, sell I think they banned it. I think, um, I think health and safety is out of way with that now, because obviously you don't want that ink getting onto your chips. The printing ink, yeah, with the ink. And you'll think about... Yeah, and you'll think about newspapers as well. They get passed about, and it, I mean, it's, I hope they've not read them first before they put chips in. I, I mean, as gross as it is when you think about it, I still miss them days. I'd love a bag of chips and a rolled up bit of newspaper. Something about it, <laughs> <laughs> especially the ones at bottom, because that's the grease Sorry finds its way to the bottom. So those last few chips, oh, they have a business. They're proper <laughs> chips. <laughs> Even if you can see a little bit of let, like a few letters imprinted on the bottom chip, I'm 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 all for that. I could go back to them days. <laughs> we should get about a quid off his man for his dinner. This was when you could buy buy things for a quid, and uh, we'd have to sneak off to the chip shop every bloody day. And you can imagine having a bag of chips every day covered in oil, chips. like as a kid. Yeah. It's crackers. We used to eat such shit. <laughs> <laughs> Now kids just walk around on streets with vape pens and cans of energy drinks. I don't know which is worse. Well, you I do know which like is worse. like a miserable old man then. <laughs> <laughs> it's kids today. Oh, God. Yeah, just <laughs> bloody kids. <laughs> don't know the barn. <laughs> don't know the barn. No. So how are so, you for time, Tony? Do you want to cut it short? Getting, I know you've I'm got getting, a hell of yeah. a schedule. I'm getting pushed for time. Yeah, I'm getting pushed for time. I'm getting messages now, so I'm like, yeah, we're on his way to come, come and pick you up from the hotel. The uh, the exhibition is first day oh, yeah. today, and first days are always a nightmare. Apologies, it's a short episode. Yep. We'll uh, make up to your next episode when we provide you a special, and we're going to do the skin print shop special, where me and Tony skin. have got the challenge of putting together uh, putting together a a, um, a print shop. And the challenge is whoever can do it with the smallest budget. So tune into episode 14. And if you've got no dollar, don't worry, we've got you covered because we're going to show you how to set up a print shop. We're now. We're now, yeah. <laughs> That'll be fun, won't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I've started doing some research already uh, and I'm, I'm actually shocked uh, how low you can go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we might have, to set, some, <laughs> we might have right. to set some ground rules because uh, I'm not. I'm not making my that, that sounded like a proper I'll be Nan's curtains stapled over a wooden picture frame. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like it has to be something that can be purchased. Um, at yeah, least none of this making shit. No. Otherwise, I'm just going to get a. Yeah, otherwise I'm going to be pushing jewel looks through. <laughs> so, <laughs> eBay job. Um, as little as little budget as possible. Yeah. And see what we get up with. Print shop from eBay. We can do it. Great, Tony. Sign us out. Sign us out, yeah. me old mucker. So, you have been listening to uh, Chippy T Podcast, a completely unscripted, made up as we go along. Uh, we're not ticking off these notes now. Yeah, no. Completely unscripted. Uh, no. Nope. Look back at the week uh, in screen printing from me, Tony Palmer, Palm Print, and... Danny Donald from Flippin' Sweet Print Co. I'll see you next week. See you there. It was a proper chunky delay, that. That made it real awkward. Are you I, ready? I, I was having let's, to, like... Let's do the clap. You ready? One, two, Go on three. Then. Four and a half seconds. Flipping hell. You see, it was perfect for me, but I'd start a sentence, and then four or five seconds later, you'd start a new conversation. Oh, that was a nightmare. Yeah. That was real difficult, because you hadn't heard me, hadn't heard me start. I, I was talking over the top of you all the oh, time. Well. That's all I felt I was doing, was just talking over the top of you. And then we both realised what we were doing, so we yeah. both stopped, and then we get an awkward silence for ten seconds. <laughs> yeah, it did. Flipping hell. Hey, I don't know. I want to 